It is absolutely fascinating to see how quickly the Series 6 slots are filling up the SCP Wiki. Folks just can't stop coming up with new ideas. Hey, I'm not complaining. It seems as though lots of bigger, more expansive ideas are being put into action as well. Plenty of new hubs and overarching stories to tie bits together. Yangers vs Kaiju, artificial intelligence monsters, and tales of people who might not actually be people. There's a wild variety of new content hitting our screens every day, and I'm just doing my best to keep up. Only so many hours, right? So here we are once again, counting down a list of fresh, fresh friends. Let's see how it goes this time. Hello, Horrorhead, and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Top 5 SCP Monsters 2020, Part 5. If you want more anomalies, make sure you check out our Top 5 SCP Foundation Videos playlist right over here. Excellent! Let's get going. Coming in at number 5, we've got SCP-3352. Okay, I'm going to come out and say it. This one is hard to spin as a monster. I suppose the real monster here is unchecked resource development and the use of dangerous chemicals and products. Or maybe the monster's strength that prevented disaster. Still, this is a fascinating read and highly recommended. Also, it might not seem like it's a new SCP because it's in the 3000 range, but it was uploaded in October 2020. Go figure. Alright, so let's actually talk about this SCP. Back in 1992, there was a petroleum refinery in Hardwick, Pennsylvania. The fact that it was so close to the residents of the city was kind of sketchy because if anything went wrong, it could have major detrimental effects on all the residents. One seemingly average day, a horrible mess of failures occurred. An elbow flange started spouting fire and couldn't be put out. Soon after, it exploded, causing a major chain reaction. Folks attempted to use the refinery's internal fire water system to fight the blaze, but as it turns out, there was something wrong with that, too. The system had been compromised a week earlier and now contained high-pressure liquid propane. Hydrofluoric acid was being used on site to assist in alkylation, and this stuff is raunchy. It burns through anything and has a low boiling point. The nearby city could have been consumed by a cloud of hydrofluoric acid if nothing was done. The fire spread, assisted by the propane, more failures happened, concrete started boiling, and it was an absolute disaster, just waiting to happen. By the time workers made it down to the spot where they could potentially evacuate the boiling acid, it seemed like it was too late to do anything. The beams were going to give, and the place was going to go up in flames. But one beam didn't. It had experienced several minutes of fire in excess of 2,000 degrees Celsius and sustained no structural damage. No beam should have been able to do that, but SCP-3352 did. Coming in at number 4, we've got SCP-2693. You're probably going to be mad, but it's hard to classify this one as a monster as well, I know. It just seems like if we're going to keep up with the newest of the new, we're going to have to take what we can get. But this one is also interesting. Take this in. It's a cat-well relationship that causes the cat to teleport all over town. Yeah, so we've got 2693-1 and 2693-2, a well and a calico cat, respectively. Neither appear to be anomalous in any way of their own accord, but if you put the two near each other, then weird stuff starts happening. Whenever the cat is near the well, it will immediately attempt to jump in. You could stop it, but it'll just get back there eventually. If it falls into the well unimpeded, shortly before it hits the bottom, it will be teleported to a random location within a 50 mile radius. And every time this happens, the cat's tail is shortened by one inch. The reasons for this tail shortening are unknown. But you know the old saying about cats, right? How they've got nine lives? Well, that appears that this is the case for this poor calico cat. After eight attempts of hopping down the well, the cat had no tail left, not even a stump, just nothing. And of course, it found its way back to the well and hopped in as per usual. Bad call this time. On the ninth attempt, it actually hit ground. And well, even though it landed on its feet, it didn't manage to make it out. Sheesh. Let's call the well a monster for having such magnetic pull over a cute little cat. Coming in at number three, we've got SCP-5606. Here's some good Canadian content for you. SCP-5606 is a zone in northern Saskatchewan that pops up from time to time. It's been observed growing as wide as 200 square kilometers before contracting and disappearing. Usually you can tell that it's there by the sudden appearance of fog and snow, regardless of prevailing weather conditions. The conditions within this zone are similar to ones in our reality, but it appears as though it's from a timeline where humanity no longer exists. But you know what does exist in this space? Extra large polar bears. The only living occupant encountered with an SCP-5606 is an extinct subspecies of polar bear known as the Ursus maritimus tyrannus. These bears were often 140% bigger than the polar bears we're used to. And in this zone, they will follow you forever. In video footage shot by two agents who found themselves lost in the cold expanse of 5606, you can hear them talking about how the bear wouldn't leave them alone. If they didn't keep constantly moving, it would catch up to them, and nobody wants to be caught by an enormous 
polar bear. That is a bad time for sure. In addition to the strange weather conditions, polar bear, and possible interreality qualities, 5606 also seems to throw guilt in people's faces. One of the agents already mentioned also saw his deceased wife trapped under the ice trying to reach out to him. Everything about 5606 just seems like a nightmare. He gave up after running into his wife and the polar bear got him. Yikes. Coming at number two, we've got SCP-5092. At first, this one didn't seem so bad. Here's the description paragraph on the initial page. SCP-5092 is a phenomenon affecting the President of the United States. Every night at exactly 1953, the President will scratch their nose regardless of any external factors. This is not due to a direct compulsion to do so, but simply the result of their nose becoming spontaneously itchy. Hmm, I guess that's interesting. But hold on, there's a little more if you comb through the page. Click on the link to bring you to the most recent version and turns out it's a little more serious than we thought. It's still the nose scratching bit, but with a twist. If the president does not receive a spontaneous itch at 1953, which does happen sometimes, an instance of SCP-5092-1 will materialize above the Earth. 5092-1 is a gigantic asteroid that will head right towards the Earth, and if it touches down, it would result in an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario. Humans and other large animal species would go extinct. However, if after the asteroid materializes, the president does indeed scratch their nose, it'll disappear. Better keep some pepper powder on hand, eh? Ensure that El Prez always has an itch to scratch. Otherwise, we're pooched. The way of the dinosaurs. And finally, at number one, we've got SCP-5565. Earthworms. You heard me right. Our final new SCP monster is a type of anomalous earthworm. These wiggly little dudes can transmute solid matter near them into soil, which they then eat. Essentially, they can burrow into and consume any solid object. They don't react negatively to saline environments either, which normal earthworms would. Instead, they start acting erratically and display even more anomalous qualities. One worm that was exposed to seawater and placed in a wooden box managed to eat a pattern into the surface of the container. Translated from Phoenician, it reads, I am the judge of sea and river. Who is it that steals my slaves? Curious. Following some further research, the Foundation discovered more interesting info near the grotto where the worms were first discovered. A large artificial cavern was found, containing a 12 meter stone sword. There were also plenty of earthworms which quickly wriggled away towards the waterfront, and they haven't been recovered as of yet. This all seems pretty odd, right? Well, it is very possible that removing these special worms was a real bad call from the start. Their ability to eat through anything is potentially dangerous, but folks should probably be more worried about the judge of sea and river. See, the Global Occult Coalition has been looking into this for longer than the Foundation, and they believe that the area is a focal point of an entity. Nobody's seen this entity in the flesh, but a bathymetric scan of the area shows something huge. An enormous humanoid figure, possibly one who could wield that 12 meter stone sword. One with control over all those weird little worms. How refreshing. All these new SCP monsters and messes to deal with. Some are less traditionally monstrous, but spooky and interesting in their own special way. So what'd you think of the list? Which of these is your favorite? Did you already know about any of them? Do you prefer standalone SCPs or ones attached to bigger stories? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more porous ones from the top five oldest SCP monsters. Nestastic Gamer 4 says these SCPs are terrifying to me because most of the information has been lost, so we don't know their true potential. Just like history itself, we only have a shadow of the real story. We'll likely never have the full picture. Isn't that maddening? Prep for it says if this was my history class, I would actually love history class. Sounds like you should be looking for a creative writing class, or maybe a historical fiction seminar. Both would probably scratch that itch. Tam Sin says, I think all these SCP videos would be better if you linked to the SCP post that you discuss. Sources are always in the description. Make sure you check it out. John Bullen says, horror, monsters, whatever, but leave out these cartoons. Homer Simpson spelled S-I-M-S-O-N, has faced off with worse than this. Leave nonsense for third graders. You be careful with that edge, John. You don't want the cool kids in the fourth grade to think you're trying too hard. And Wing Gweep says, yay, SCPs for spooky month. You know it. We gotta keep that spooky mood flowing. Plus, we're doing SCP marathon videos, so check those out if you haven't already. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I play in the refrigerators at the dump, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more snarky SCPs. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. And then we'll forget about affecting the president. Humans and other special worms from the see the global occult coalition is see. But it appears as but it appears as if it's the.